Hello and welcome to our series of Ireland's native trees. This episode is all about holly. Holly trees are all over Ireland. You'll find them in many different places and find them in many gardens too. Despite that, they're an unusual tree. They're unusual in that they are our only evergreen tree that is not a conifer. So they're not a cone bearing tree like a Scots pine but yet their leaves stay all year round. They're amazingly well adapted for growing underneath other trees, underneath other shrubs, and, and in hedges as well, they do extremely well there. And they're very well adapted because with these evergreen leaves, they're always ready to capture the sun's energy so they can start photosynthesizing. You can see the deep, deep green color of all the chlorophyll that's in the leaves ready for the minute there's enough sun's light or sun's energy available, they're able to start pulling carbon down, splitting the carbon from the oxygen and pushing out the oxygen, storing the carbon in itself, turning it into sugars and growing. An easy tree to identify the holly trees with their lovely dark green, but shiny evergreen leaves. And of course, very spiky tough, tough feel to them, careful of the sharp little tips to the spikes. But then amazingly, they lose their spikes when they get higher up, when they get out of reach of our grazing animals and a red deer on its hind legs would be able to stand up about as tall as I can reach. So that's around about the grazing height of animals in Ireland. And once holly trees grow above that height, they don't produce as much spikes. And when they get quite tall, the tallest leaves don't have any spikes at all. They don't need to. They don't need that protection anymore. And they don't bother putting the energy into trying to make them. Another way to identify holly, apart from those evergreen leaves, is this beautiful, beautiful smooth bark. And it can be nearly white in colour. You can see this tree is a little blotchy. There's some mosses and some lichens growing on it. But it really stands out from the other trees that are in the area, the clusters of hazel branches that are coming up and the rowan trees that are around here too. As an understory tree, holly is very well adapted to where it's living. The big oak trees and ash trees around here, they have captured most of the light, but holly is still able to grow at a reasonable pace and dominate its own area. And of course, those evergreen trees giving it advantage in early spring and late into the autumn when all the bigger trees drop their leaves. Holly trees in the past, and to a certain extent now, were prized by wood carvers. They have a very dense grain, being a reasonably slow growing tree and a hard wood. That grain is quite easy to work with and they can make some very small, very intricate, strong pieces out of the wood that's there. Holly trees were also used um, to feed animals in the winter time. Despite those tough, tough, spiky looking green leaves, Deer will often come down from the mountains in the winter time into our forest and they will eat on the holly leaves, eat on those tough winter holly leaves. But holly leaves were also gathered in the past and they were fed to some animals, especially the likes of pigs and goats. And they were used as a winter fodder or as a supplement to winter fodder. Holly trees distribute themselves in an amazing way. They produce those bright, bright red berries. And those berries that are just starting to appear now at the time of filming, which is late summer, and they're still green and bright, bright green. And they won't start going red until deep into winter time. Really November into December is when we'll start seeing the bright red clusters. Later than the hawthorn, later than the, the blackthorn, or later than the rowan tree. And they don't really seem to become palatable to the animals and to the birds especially until after they've been frozen a couple of times. So they like the hard frosts. And they're a very, very important source of nutrition for birds over the winter time. There are thrushes that come from Scandinavia called red wings and another species of thrush called field fares. And they come in their thousands and thousands and flow into north, the north of Ireland, all across the north and into North Donegal. And they flow down our valleys, seeking out the likes of holly trees and rowan trees. Once they've depleted their stock of berries up in Scandinavia where they breed, and then they move down and they eat those berries. And that's very important to sustain them. But for the holly tree, that's very important too because of course they can't digest the little seeds. So there's typically two or three seeds inside a holly berry and those seeds go right through the bird system and they get dropped down, typically in a woodland like this, 
where the tree might be roosting at night time for safety and shelter and it'll drop down that seed in a little package of, of bird dropping or nutrition and that will help it to grow. And then of course the tree with its understory properties is able to fill this little niche, this little spot underneath the canopy of the big oaks and the ash. Planted here, this tree most likely planted here by a visiting thrush. Another thing that makes holly a little unusual compared to a lot of Irish trees is that it has male and female trees. Most Irish native trees have both male and female flowering parts on the one tree. Whereas this, the holly tree will either be male or it'll be female. They both produce little white flowers in late springtime. But the, if you look closely at those little white flowers, the little white flowers that have quite a large green centre, that's the females. And then on the male trees, you'll see the little white flowers, tiny, tiny little flowers with four petals, very beautiful things. And you'll see the pollen on them and the ones with the pollen, the bright yellow pollen, kind of orangey yellow, that's the male trees. And those trees are very important for pollinating insects. And in fact, those trees support the holly blue butterfly a very beautiful butterfly. We've only three different species of blue butterfly. And the holly blue, it's about the size of my thumbnail. And they emerge early in spring, in an April time, and they will lay their eggs onto the holly trees. And then the next generation of them will emerge later on in the summer. So without the holly trees, we wouldn't have those beautiful blue butterflies. But they support a lot of insect life. They give an awful lot of shelter for birds like wrens and robins in the winter time with that evergreen foliage. And of course, that protection from predators with the spikes. So they're a wonderful tree for wildlife, as well as a wonderful tree for us to have and a very beautiful thing with a little bit of winter color. So if you're wondering what to plant in your garden, another great native tree to support life. And in fact, can, they can make wonderful hedges, stock proof, strong hedges that are evergreen pop some holly trees into your garden. They'll be slow growing, but they'll be there for a very, very long time.